All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another painting session. Today I'm gonna do a simple, hopefully simple, seascape, step by step. All right, this is a picture that I took. Uh, I live not too far from the water, so at the beach one day. It was a nice, beautiful afternoon, I must say. So I'm gonna teach you how to do paint this wave. I'm gonna have this picture, hopefully posted somewhere on this corner or maybe somewhere up there. Not quite sure yet. But anywho, from time to time, I'll try and post a picture for you. Oh, actually, I can see it in the screen right here, a little bit. Anyway, so I got an eight by 10 uh, canvas panel. Um, here are the colors that I'm using and no particular brand here, but I have cad yellow, medium, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, burnt sienna, titanium white. I didn't feel the need for burnt umber. I mean, I could uh, easily gray down the blue with uh, burnt sienna, which will give me like a cool, cool gray. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is the inside of the wave. I'm going to try to get some of that lighter color in first. So by doing that, I'm going to mix perhaps uh, I see some yellow ochre, maybe a hint of cerulean. Yeah, it looks like that's it. Put a little bit more of my um, brush here, a little bit of cerulean. Because it's not totally green, but there's some green in there. You're probably wondering why you cerulean it versus the ultramarine. The cerulean is going to give me like a nicer, um, should I say, cooler green. Let's test that out. And let me add some white. Ultramarine blue has a little bit of red in it. And I really don't want that red right off the bat. More white. Maybe just a hint of yellow. And more white. Put a little bit of water on my brush, dent my brush a little bit. Let's start. So basically, I'm just going quickly. Putting in where I see these colors. Put a little bit of cerulean. And maybe a little bit of burnt sienna for that base. Oops. Oh well, I'll fix that after. I know it looks a little bit darker and not as green right off the bat, but I promise you I will make it look greener. Because what I will do, well, I already started. Uh, what I will do is just add, as the paint dries, because this is an acrylics, as paint dries, I'm able to layer faster than I would be with oil. So I'm able to not just layer, but glaze over some colors that I already put down. The beauty of acrylics. Um, so I'm able to change the colors as needed. So I'm putting a really thin coat like basically almost like a wash that you would do with oils. Okay. All right. 
there's a little bit on the side here as well, some of that color. I'm just putting it wherever I think I see this color. Now, it's not exactly the same color um, as what's in the picture, but I'm going to build up to that. What I'm doing right now is putting the approximate. Approximate color is what I see on the wave itself. Now, this is like a mid-tone value. What I'm going to do after this, I will be able to go and push the colors lighter and you know darker at will because I'm in a mid-tone value which means you know uh, the value of 1 would be white value of 10 will be black so I'm somewhere in the middle uh, as far as if you need your to get your values right because you you know it doesn't matter what color you put in there as long as your values are right the painting will turn out all right at least 80 percent all right um, so I'm just putting the approximate colors down first then I'm gonna start covering the back in the front just trying to cover the whole painting first and then I will go back and true try to get the approximate colors to complete this painting now because this is acrylic some of it stuff is already tacking up and drying so I will be able to go back and glaze certain color or you know scumble certain colors for gradation color gradation to feather in and bring the painting home bring it together all right uh, I may even have to darken this up a little bit I, because when I start putting the white of some of the waves wash, it might not show up as bright white as I want it to be, okay? Um, one, because I'm going over a darker color, and two, the possibility is because this is not dark enough compared to the lightest color. So I may have to go darker. We will see. I don't know that yet. That's why I want to do the rest of the painting first block in all your colors approximate color uh, let me put that out there your approximate value approximate color so I can better judge where my darks and my lights have to be and where the muted colors and the brightest colors have to go eventually okay all right so ultramarine blue a little bit of yellow ochre possibly a little bit of cerulean blue there and even maybe a little bit of burnt sienna let's put some white and see what we get actually there's a little bit of yellow from what i see and a little bit more blue i'm trying to hit that value i mean and hit the right color on the first try but it's not always easy so I know there's like a darker, yes, it's about right. Darker wave or water right here. This canvas is a little bit rough, so. Uh, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue here, maybe a little bit of yellow. And a little bit of burnt sienna, more blue. More cerulean. Uh, it looks like it's about the same color, but let's change that. Let's go more on the bluer side. Now, if you're new to my channel, uh, this is a process that I, take, that I do with all my acrylics. I paint very impressionistic. So, uh, I don't look for details right off the bat. I just look for approximate colors and shapes once you've got that down the rest is almost should I say pretty straightforward maybe a little bit and you notice look I'm just popping on these colors like you know not really being careful. Now 
I'm trying to use a good amount of paint on my brush. Now we're going to go back over these colors in a minute. See already I can see that this will have to be darker than this area right here. But see this is that that's the advantages of putting in the approximate values right off the bat. Filling up your canvas with the approximate colors so you can better judge what needs to be done. Maybe a hint of sienna would dull down that blue a bit. Actually, this this painting could benefit from uh, some phthalo. Perhaps I should put some phthalo. All right, let's add phthalo blue right here, a little bit of it. Now remember, you don't need too much stalo blue. It's a very powerful color. Let's try this. A little bit of stalo. A little bit of cerulean. Yep. That was it. I was trying to work with a limited color palette. I mean, it's pretty limited per se, but all right. There you go, it's a cooler blue here. And I'll be able to go back over some of this stuff. And you can see that, now you wanna follow the direction of the movement, okay? You don't wanna just go up and down, no. You wanna follow direction of the movement. Believe me that you're Admirers or people that are looking at your painting will be able to discern some of these strokes that you're doing because they're gonna look at your painting up close and they're gonna examine your strokes. They wanna know more about how you did this. Okay. Should have been more of ultramarine blue on this side. I'm leaving the paint a little bit dark and for good reasons so that when I start plopping the white wash it will show itself pretty nicely. brush a little bit so that it's almost like um, using a wash and on oil if you're an oil painter transitioning to acrylics basically by, by me adding more water um, it's almost like using more odorless mineral spirits now this part, same colors. Let's use a little bit more brown, gray that down a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more burnt umber. And the reason why I added a, a burnt sienna, I'm sorry, not burnt umber, burnt sienna is because the sand, you know, you gotta figure the sand is brown 
and uh, so it's mixing with the with the water we may darken this up a little bit and add more colors to this it's not over yet okay all right now we got the canvas pretty much covered so from what I see so far and analyzing the wave I'm going to have to make the curvature I went more like this which is going to have to be more rounded out this way when I put the highlights on the top which will give this more definition and movement um, let me see where else do I need to go with this let me start putting in some light colors like white for example uh, maybe a hint of yellow a lot of white alright let's see where this how light I'm going to have to get this Now, I'm not too worried if I screw up on the white, if it's too white, whatever, because you can always go over the white with a different color. It's easier to go. There's like this wash over here. There's one here like that. And there's other washes. like this now I don't have to be 100% just like the picture I will get close enough to it there's some wash here same stuff here let me punctuate this wash a little bit more it's gonna start making sense in a few minutes okay looking at the painting looks like from what i see i need to go darker here here to really make this white stand out or the highlights and probably at the base a little bit darker when i do uh over here and you will see that the whites are going to start to pop out even more hold on one more spot here Yeah, fill this up a little bit there you go just to give me an indication okay all right you see just plopping down somewhat what I see there's some white here like that The magic's going to come alive in a few minutes, folks. Give me a little time. All right, let's rework this sector right here. So this time, I'm going to actually use a little bit of thalo and burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine added to that. A little bit of white. That's going to be a, give me a nice dark blue. Now watch the difference. See that? There you go. Money shot. A little bit more phthalo. Ultramarine. Hint of Sienna. See the corner? That's all I'm using. All right. So now start to. You're probably wondering, like, why didn't I go darker since the beginning? Well, I just didn't know how dark I will need this. 
and now I can better judge my colors because I went with midtones. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of ochre. Repeat the same thing. A little bit sienna, maybe a hint of white. Put a little bit of water on my brush here because I want the paint to flow a little easier. Okay, just cut into some of this right here. And notice I'm still using a number four flat. I haven't gone to a smaller brush because back here, uh, as the waves, the further back you are, you really don't need that much detail because all this back here is really not that important. This is basically like the supporting actors in a movie. They're not really there. They're not really the ones making the movie. They just help enhance the movie, I guess is a better way to put it. In terms of cinema, if that helps. Put a little bit of water on my brush. Go back and continue. Some of these holes that I'm leaving are eventually going to get filled. A little bit of thalo, a little bit of cerulean as I'm going back because I see some of these highlights of blues back there. Like that. Same thing here. This is going to be. See how the colors are changing all suddenly? You see that? See how now all suddenly this yellow is really standing out compared to what it was a few minutes ago? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And still there's going to be some lighter colors going over these. Uh, I'm doing like this C motion. Now, don't forget, there's going to be some highlights going here and there sparsely around. That's why I'm leaving some of these holes that I'm not too worried about. Some of these uh, clear, lighter colors. All right. It's not that I forgot them. There was a reason for it. A little bit more thalo blue. Some cerulean blue. Give me that nice, cool blue here. Oh, that was a little bit weak. Try that again. Maybe I had too much water on my brush. This, the paint wasn't thick enough. Let me add a little bit more white to make it a little bit more opaque. Or perhaps what happened is that the value over here was close enough uh, to where it needed to be that I really don't see too much of a difference. There you go. All right, and there's some darks that are gonna go in here as well. Little by little, we're gonna build up this painting. I'm gonna reserve this uh, general area for kind of last, okay? Because I'm trying to see where I need to darken colors and where I need to lighten colors. All right, for the base of the wave, same deal. Let's darken that up a bit here so let me go a little bit more ultramarine blue a little bit of thalo a little bit of yellow more thalo these are some of the darker parts of the wave and I'm still using that kind of a C stroke. So I'm just going to show the viewer. And remember how I told you about the stroke. Initially I started doing like this and now I'm flattening out the wave more to show that it's more of an incline on the beach. That's why I say it's important to show direction of the wave okay it's more purplish on this side so let's use a little bit more phthalo 
a little bit of crimson. Poor crimson's all by itself saying, what are you gonna use me? What are you gonna use me? I wanna be used. All right, and it is ultramarine. And maybe a little bit more white. Put a lot of water on my brush so I'll be able to quickly cover. Now to darken the base a little bit. So let's do yellow. Burnt Sienna. And maybe a, a hint of crimson and a hint of cerulean. Let me check. It's pretty bright. Uh, let me go bring down that chroma a little bit by putting um, yellow ochre because yellow ochre has some red in it. And when you put that with the uh, with that yellow, it's gonna. That's, I'm sorry. Let me go back to this. It's by. Yeah, I, the reason I put the yellow ochre in there is because it has a little bit of red. And the red interacting with the blue will make almost like a purplish color, which will. Purple and yellow are complementary colors, they will mute each other down. I guess that's what I was trying to say. It was a little bit more complex than what I guess it needed to be. Let me see, it's probably a little bit more greener than that. Let me go with that. A little bit more burnt sienna. A little bit of white to, oh my lord, have mercy. Put more sienna. I just screwed that up royally. Let me see. It's about right. All right. Just the base here. So right now, basically, what I'm doing is glazing over certain parts where I've already been and actually need to add a little bit more white to this to gray this color down a little bit more. Let me actually just a hint of Uh, maybe a little bit of blue and white. Really need to gray down this color. More white, I guess. So you're going over right what I did basically. You see some of the undertone of the colors are showing through. So I need to actually mix a yellow. A uh, little bit of surreal, uh, burnt sienna. A hint of cerulean blue. Tone it down a little bit. said darken it not lighten it let me see all right 
this should technically work. So I'm just scumbling light touch just scumbling Let some of the undertone colors show through. Put a little bit here. And just dry brushing is what I'm doing now. Okay. Now, I'm going to start cutting in some of these areas here. Right now it seems a little bit more yellow than I really wanted to, but I'm, we're going to change that in a few minutes. areas here, a little nuance, just to start us off as a guide here. Same here. And you're wondering why I'm doing it over the white and you know, am I afraid to mess this up? Not really, because I could always go back over the white areas. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes. I'm just putting approximate what I see. I'm not gonna put every single one of these. Um, openings, okay. Just, enough to satisfy the looks you know just enough that's appeasing to the eye okay all right so let me put more of this foam around here So some of it goes See how that dramatically changes your perception of colors of how dark or how light something is A hint of yellow ochre just to warm up some of this color. Doing like these reverse W's. And if they're too fat, you'll see what I'll do if when they're too fat. And then a little bit here, just like that. And there's some right here. Same thing, you want to show movement, show the direction of the wave, 
by how the sea foam is moving. So I'm showing uh, sharp turn. Okay. All right. Oops. Some right here as well. This is the tedious part. You know, I mean, you don't have to make it complicated. I'm, I'm trying not to make it complicated. Just make it, you know, simple. Um, okay. For now, like I said, I'll repeat. For now, we can work with that. We'll take a smaller brush afterwards. Let's see, there's, I know there's water movements. See how nice and that the, the light colors are showing up against this blue. This is because the blue is like nice and dark. And we're gonna fix that. Right now I'm just putting, give myself, basically is add, like adding footnotes of where certain aspects are gonna be. Even if I go back over what I just did, you know, like go over it with different color, no problem, I will I can fix it afterwards. I see some dark colors here, so I see some. Lizard Crimson, Sienna. And blue. I see some of this in the wash. Maybe more sienna. A little bit more blue. It's just this these dark undertones of the waves that I see. Not being very like, you know, particular or too careful about what I'm putting. Just, I just add a little bit of uh, yellow ochre to make it a little bit more on a greener side. Where's that damn color? right here there's some right here some here you're thinking I'm putting this everywhere well not really, <clears throat> not really, because you'll see what I'm going to do afterward. Right now, I'm just establishing uh, some of these darks under, the, you know, the undercurrent of the water. There's like, you know, sand mixing up into these waves. Basically, this is what some of these dark areas are. They're just mixing together with the blues, like these little pocket holes. And I'm putting it everywhere right now, just arbitrarily. And you'll see how that's gonna change in a few minutes, what that's gonna do. It's kind of hard to explain. You'll just have to see at this particular moment in time. Okay. So now let's start again, going to the back and we're gonna work our way back to the front. All right. There's some dark aspects. of the wave that should be good I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna just to um, and a little bit of Thalo blue because what that's going to do is give like a little bit of a greenish, grayish green color. 
So some of these waves here in the back. Now you understand what I said about making some of these. These are just some where the sun's not hitting against the water. And notice I'm making like long, long C strokes. Sometimes even some straight strokes. Okay. And lighter ones are going to go here because you need lighter against dark, dark against light. So let's go cerulean. I mean, phthalo, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, just to tone down this blue a bit. Let's try this out. Yeah, that should work. Actually, I need more of a pure thalo. More white. Let me go with ultramarine. And see, making like this gradation between these two colors. And if I really want to have fun, let's go make a little bit more. This is just straight thalo blue. These long C strokes just um, just give an indication of movement. A little bit of cad yellow this time. Give a variety of, in the color here. Tone that down a little bit with this yellow ochre. Remember, yellow ochre contains some red in it. So where the red and green will kind of mute the colors a bit. It's kind of what I want. I want too bright of a green. Because when you put a highlight over a muted color, the highlight will show a lot more than if you just do it over pure color. So, cutting into this wave here a little bit, actually make a little bit more on the blue side. And more white. Some aspects of this wave has some blue shadows in it, so I need a lot of white. And maybe a little bit Sienna on this blue to cause make a great color. More white. There you go. Like, because this wave as well has a shadow side to it. I'm still this whole time using a fat uh, round brush. This is a number. Uh, numbers are worn out. I think this is a number two. Yeah, this is a number two round. There's some shadows here as well. So the light source is coming from this angle. The sun was setting, so I'm on the east coast of Florida. The sun was setting, obviously, on the west side. So 
the sun's rays are hitting directly. There's some aspects of this of this whitewash that are going to be in shadow. And I'm kind of following that here approximately. There's some undertone shadows here as well. Probably more white. There's some back here. If you want to make nice sharp lines, you might want to put water on your brush. Some ultramarine blue here. basically glazing over some of these colors. Going back over what I did here. some of this with a little bit of white just to some parts of this wave back here or have some of that wash why use can be tedious I mean you can make a little bit more, probably a, a bit more simpler than what I'm making it I guess sometimes I just get carried away but I just want in like this one video to show you all these possibilities of when you um, how to add uh, glazes over what you've already done you know to to show you that how you know go back and forth you see just going back over what I just did here some parts of it not all of it just to show whitewash now you can see these different variants of uh, the wash here and then just you know sp splash so I'm really going everywhere back and forth back and forth with this painting I'm trying to preserve my brightest brights And I know there's brighter brights here. The sun is hitting certain parts of these waves. Not all of it. Actually, I need to perhaps um, 
a little bit of cerulean, uh, sienna, and a little bit of ultramarine blue, make this a little bit grayish color. This and darken, gray down some of this area here a little bit. Actually, maybe even a little bit of cerulean blue. There you go. What that does is make this look brighter over here. There you go. There you go. By graying down some of these washes here, the lighter ones are going to stand out more. Okay. And I'm really like barely see I'm going back over with the same color here graying that down a little bit more with this mix that I just made of uh, sir, uh, ultra, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna just to gray it down a little bit um, put some bright whites here on the top I want to see how far I can push this white. I can make more pocket holes here and there and probably more veins of the wash. Maybe I'll do that towards the end, but for right now, I think I'm spending a little bit too much time on that. So let me move on and start working on some of the highlights of this wave. I just did cerulean blue and a little bit of phthalo blue without mixing it, meaning without adding any kind of sienna or burnt umber to um, tone it down. I want to keep it uh, almost pure color. I want to make it really nice and blue. canvas I'm painting on is a little bit rough I'm not trying to make excuses just uh, observation here but I already knew that maybe a little bit of yellow putting more water on my brush and let some of this green with this blue mix in with this brown color over here you can still see part of that brown showing through this uh, thin color that I'm putting basically like a wash because I put enough water on my brush to make it like a wash here so Not everywhere, just doing these little C's. Some here. Perhaps I should put more color on my more paint. There you go. All 
Now there's some of this wave here reflecting in the water. So I'm going to make some yellow ochre, which is pretty opaque. A little bit of cerulean. And there you go. More white. So it's going to be like. Feel my paint sticking a little bit. Need to add more water, make sharper lines. Okay. More highlight on this side just to show the foam. There you go. And actually, I see some of it here as well faintly I'm doing it above these dark blues okay because these blues represent the shadow so the the um, reflection is going to be on top of that shadow okay I'm not doing it like uh, and I'm doing it in front of the shadow and the back of the shadow some of this highlights because the the water the sun's reflecting off the wave and the wave pushing this way so it's going to be on top of that little shadow here so remember we got to remember the direction of the sun this way and coming back towards me right on top same thing here you see i didn't do it all the way here i left some of these darks hits the the wave reflects on top of the wave. I hope that wasn't too complicated there. All right, so let me start working on the wash in the foreground, what I started. White, maybe a hint of cad yellow. So, Not putting it everywhere. Something. Oh, shoot. Notice this is a little bit gray down, and I'm putting a light, lighter color right on top of that. See? The wash going back towards the wave. Almost making like the semi C circle like this as I'm going back. They're larger. Some here. Follow approximately what you see on your reference photo. If you were doing plan air, you wouldn't have time to look at every single aspect of this wash. So you put in really what you see really fast. That was a little bit too much yellow. A little splash up here. There you 
go. Just give indications. Now I'm going to put some, like I did earlier, some indications of these pocket holes here. Actually, they need to be darker. I don't know why it went lighter. Okay, there you go. Just a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I mixed in a little bit of yellow ochre. Highlight some of the shadow side, you know, uh, reinforce some of those a little bit there. Reinforce that a little bit, just give it like a light wash. Really light, light stroke, light wash. Really reinforce these darks so as to give them like a stronger contrast against the colors that are next to it. Sorry, it's kind of hard to talk and do this at the same time. I'm trying my best, folks, and to try and explain this to you. All right, so let me go back to that phthalo blue, a little bit of white. Let's add some more contrast so now let me make a little bit of shadow line here It's a little bit too dark for now, but you'll see. Just wipe off if it's too much. Not everywhere, just some parts. And wipe it off quickly. Because we're probably gonna go back over this in a minute and you'll see why. Go. Let's put some ultramarine, a little bit of white, a little bit of sienna. Enough water on my brush and feather this in. There you go, leave some of that highlight that I had earlier, that lighter color, to show like some of the sun reflecting off these waves here, these little ripples into the sand. And by doing that, I was that's why I added a darker color, all right, a darker blue. And uh, I mean, some people, you know, depending on your reference photo, how it is, some of it has the sun you know, rays hitting lighter over here uh, and then pushing the light towards the front. But I decided to go differently and just have, uh, making this look like more of a wet sand, which is gonna be darker, and the sun hitting off these ripples here and reflecting onto the sand. I think it looks better that way as opposed to the other way. Like I say, you don't have to be a, re a slave to your reference photo, you know. All right, now I guess I could just have a little bit more fun and do more
of these fun pocket holes here and there. Have fun with that all day and just make more of them. All right, you want to have fun with some of these uh, veins? Let me just put a little bit of You can make more veins if you want. Make sure like you get a brush with, you can use a liner, liner brush. Or a brush with the sharp point. and do this all day if you want. Actually, you know what I want to do? Let's put some sparkles here and there. Why not? Put a sparkle here. Put some back here. Let's put some. Sparkles right there too, why not? All right, if you guys have any questions or any comments uh, about the painting or you want to know more about the materials that I use or certain techniques that I use in a painting, leave them in the comment section. I will answer them as quick as possible and I'll be more than happy to help you. So you guys, thank you again for supporting my channels, please. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification, then that will tell you every single time that I have a new 
posting our new video, whether live or pre-recorded, it will let you know when I'm on so you don't miss the next video. So with that, I want to say thank you for all your support and I will see you on the next painting. Have a great evening.